course the thing was in back in those days yeah. if there was a fight we'd still keep playing Which is your best side? I don't know. That's the one side. And this is the other. I think both sides together, to be honest. Alright, there, that's in the middle then. Oh my. People say I'm the laugh of the party girls. You've been playing uh, live on stage for about 50 years, as far as I know. It must have been that time, sort of, yeah. that sort of length of time has been. Just one long gig, I think. If you see me with another girl, seems like I'm having fun. Although she may be cute, she's just a substitute because you're just the permanent one. So take a good look at my face. Shouting the gamble and his. His guitar touched the microphone stand, which was touching, and he sort of just had an electric shock and just went dead at a pop in the tree. I've been playing since I was seriously with bands since I was about um, 13, I think, when I joined Sid Gordon's um, big show band in Monmouth. He played for the he worked for the RAF, oh. and uh, he used to have a big band. I think it was about 13 people in there. Well, and the uh, from playing the guitar at the at the cinema, um, I joined Sid Gordon's band when I was about 13, and as it's about 13 lineup. Loads of people, saxophones, trumpets, trombones, yeah. and another singer. He used to sing all the ballads, yeah. and they got me along to sing all the Cliff Richards and the Elvis songs. Oh. And I enjoyed that. It's nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> And how old were you when you first started in a cinema then? Younger than 13? Oh, I was probably about 9 or 10, I expect, maybe 11. I used to get up there and play the guitar and then entertain the people while the, um, while the electricity was off or there was a power cut. <laughs> oh. Did you have to stand on a chair? Or? No, no, I stood on the stage and they had a long microphone with it. You know, right thing on the top. I used to sing into that, literally. And it was good, good fun. This time to waste, let's get the show on the road. had a guitar, your first guitar was a plastic was one. was a plastic you one, yeah. Oh, and, what? and you did up in the attic? Oh, I, with the plastic guitar, the first day I had it, it was for Christmas, I went up to the top story of the house. We had three stores in the top story. There was, the acoustics were absolutely unbelievable, lots of echo. So I sort of got up there and I started singing songs and playing this guitar. And once I started, 
I could not stop. I went on for about three hours. I sang all the Sam Cooke songs I could possibly think of and songs that I made up myself and it was always oh, an unbelievable time in my life. I can always remember it. Uh, was that, were you playing three chords then or just the basic chords? I was playing the basic the chords rest. and singing all the songs I could to yeah. it in yeah. key. Yeah. Because, you know, and it was, it was great. It was echo. Tell us something about the Charles Kingsley Combat. Oh, Charles Kingsley Combat. How did you um, get to be in that? Well, my uh, my mum used to know, um, I think it was, uh, the chap was named Cox, I can always remember. She used to, he used to play the guitar and he was in the Charles Kingsley Combat and they saw me singing one day and they, they said, can you come along and sing? And I think he was playing uh, rhythm guitar there. So they got me along singing. Kingsley on the piano, played some really on guitar, really, Nice That's Kingsley Ward. That's Kingsley Ward and Charles on the guitar, which I think he had a strat, a nice strat. Yeah. Charles and, Ward uh, was his brother, two that's brothers. Right, Charles and Kingsley together. And I think we had Dave, um, we had a guy called Dave on the bass guitar and we had um, Hayden Jones on the drums who lived opposite me. Oh. And uh, we, we did lots of gigs and it was really enjoyable. Um, and then from there you went up to London with them. Went to London with them to, to uh, Joe Meek Studio. Joe Meek Studio. I think Kingsley had a, a, an organ, quite a big one. It wasn't a Hammer, I think it was a Larry. Yeah. We used to carry it up the stairs. I used to go there every month, I think, and uh, it was great. We, used to, uh, we must have been there about eight times, I suppose. This is history. Joe Meek was going around twiddling all the knobs and things. And yeah? Yeah, I, we were singing songs. And was he wearing a suit? Oh, time? always had a suit yeah. on, yeah. He twiddled lots of the knobs. Professional. Lots of equipment, massive. Because he had a lot of secrets with his equipment. Oh, in in, in those days, yeah. the equipment was about six times the size of it is now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. And uh, did you meet any of the other? Say stars at Joe Meek's studio because I yes, know Tom did. Jones was up there. As we, like, far Tom as Jones, we've seen um, Heinz Burke and people like that, and also I've played with all these other ones. Like sort of, we had Pink Floyd. I played with those. We with what uh, supported? Supported with Kingsley and Charles. Yeah, so Charles Kingsley and Charles. Uh, Johnny Kidna Pirates. Uh, Eric Clapton with the Yardbirds. I can remember that game. Yeah. So there are lots of people there, and also Joan Brown and the Brothers who played the guitar behind his. Yeah. That's how I'd see yeah. anybody doing that yeah. before. Yeah, he was good. He done all those game. things were being done in England already, weren't they? A lot of those they were techniques the last, and tricks. Uh, yeah, that's the first Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. Very, uh, very good at that. Uh, yeah, but that's the first time I'd seen anybody do that really good. No, yeah. you know, Joe Brown was really good. Good uh, for No, and of course at Joe Meeks, you said you had to carry that yeah. equipment up those stairs. Up those stairs, yeah, above yeah, the leather shop. We carried them up the stairs and it was terrible. I can always remember doing it. And you, you didn't realise at the time you were actually walking through rock. English history. rock history. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Is Demo Dan down here in the Welsh Valleys? Just taking a five minute break here. Michael Van Ellison, he's in there. He doesn't stop. He's jamming away now with how long has this been going on? <laughs> I've been here 24 hours and he's, he's been going on the whole 24 hours. It's like a, the living epitome of what rock and roll is. jamming away there in the front room. Can't stop him. I went off to bed last night and uh, <laughs> about three o'clock in the morning in the distance I could still hear him. <laughs> Singing away, playing away.
Let's go and have a look. You don't believe me, do you? Been cooking some chicken in the kitchen. The chicken's in there, he's got the chicken on, he's got the cooking on. Right there, Michael. Yeah. Do the right. Michael, man. <laughs> you exactly certainly are. You know, I'm Michael Van Anderson. Exactly. Must stop. Hey. It's a 24-hour party. So you were starting on stage in that cinema. That was in the 50s. That was in the 50s, yeah. And that was really quite rock and roll. That was back in the rock and roll days, yeah. Skiffle and stuff. And like then that. the 60s. How did the music, the music that you were doing, was that then going into soul music more? Like it was going into Saturday, soul, yeah, then we went into Gino Saturday, Washington. Gino Washington, Otis Redding and yeah. people like that, and that was the sort of type of things we were doing. Yeah. All the soul artists, mm. all the soul tracks that we done were basically around that sort of stage. And they were all the best ones, you know, all the best soul yeah. songs. And I don't think they really had discos that wasn't quite no, started no. then. A it, lot of the yeah, entertainment many live discos, bands. It was a live band all the time. Yeah. <coughs> and the equipment? The equipment was uh, rather sort of dated now, but a lot of it's still around. I mean, the Vox amplifiers, that's what we used. Um, I think Charles Ward had a Vox amplifier. I think we used Vox as well, maybe for a PA system, I can't remember, but it was something like that. Yeah. And uh, there was no mixing desk or anything like that. Obviously, no. uh, the vocals came to the PA and everybody used their amplifiers. And, and the drummer just played and drums. And the drummer just played the drums, yeah. It wasn't mic'd up or anything <laughs> like we do now. No. And I do remember that the bass, the idea was the bass would vibrate through the wooden stage and through the wooden floor. Exactly, yeah. And the further back it was, against the back wall, the louder it became. <coughs> that was the uh, secret yeah. of it, yeah. yeah. You could keep it a well back. The real pulse of it. And then, let's see now, the 70s, you were obviously still playing yeah, in played. bands, or were you playing on your own then? Uh, no, I was still bands, but I'd be, um, I sort of found a, a very amount, very amount of bands. I had one called Pep Talk, one called oh, yeah. um, um, Soul Incorporated, yeah. um, Backstage Pass. So that I just sort of gathered people around me and had sort of loads, yeah. like oh, eight or nine people, and uh, some of the, the bands there. And I usually su supplied the PA system. Yeah. Ah. Well, the idea was to keep playing live. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Nineties, well, you've really just kept going, and you've always been playing live. Yeah. Now, last night you just got back from London. Just got back from London. And now you don't have. Well, you didn't have roadies in the old days because no, you carried it all yourself, yeah. basically. And so now you're still doing that because I'm still doing that. Yeah. So you came back from the gig in London and uh, loaded your kit and in. Loaded my kit up. Drive all the way back. Drive all the way back. I drove. I started back about three o'clock in the morning. I think yeah. I got here about half seven or something like yeah, that. Yeah. So you haven't had that much. Well, sleep, I didn't either. sleep. No, I didn't yeah, go to no. sleep. Well, you're doing very well. You're doing very well. And that was a gig in London. Yeah. And uh, and then tonight you're off to a, a gig. Leicester again. Yeah. Right. Gig again. The, now the gig in London, though, that was with the band you're playing with currently. You play with uh, that's a no, small that band. No, uh, that, that particular gig was one I'd done on my own with some backing tracks. Oh, oh sorry, but so. you at the moment you do play with a, oh with it with it yeah a full soul lineup. Yeah, band that's why Soul Incorporated. We well, Soul Machine now. 
Soul Machine. Soul Machine. Soul Machine. As a London band. As a London band, okay. yeah. Uh, and then tonight you're going out just just you. Just me. But you still keep playing, yeah. <laughs> What is it about what keeps you going with these live gigs? <coughs> well, basically, <laughs> apart from the money. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's the music. When well, you get to love the music so much, and yeah. you can't be without it. It's like a drug almost. Yeah. It sort of gets into your system. Yeah. And even when I'm walking around the house, I'm singing all the time. Yeah, if we I'm know in the bath, that. I'm singing. When I'm in bed at night, it's, I can very rarely sleep very much. But yeah. what I do, I go through all the songs there and I'm singing them as I'm going in to bed. sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going through all the words as we're lying in bed there. and. Um, Anything I can forget, you know what I mean? I sort of catch up on it. Yeah. That's how I do it. I've noticed that since I've been down here. I've been with you now 24 hours. And uh, during the breakfast or last night, the evening meal. Just keep singing. Doing the gardening, <laughs> whatever, wherever you are, pottering about. It's like, just it's like a permanent. It's like a permanent gig. song, isn't it? It's going through your brain all the yeah. time, so you're singing a different song. What do I need to learn now? And then you think, oh, I, I yeah. remember the words of this one, so I'll sing yeah. that one. I think life itself is your audience. So wherever well, you are, well, I suppose it is. Really. Sending out the singing. vibes. That's all I've ever really wanted to do is sing. My I have played in some fairly, I've played some really large leisure centres, lots of, but I've also played in some small places as well. Probably um, maybe 15 or 20 people or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And I, it's very hard to, uh, to put it over good when there's not so many people. But yeah. the thing is, they always clap, so yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, You're always good. Yeah. If you go down good, it's okay, you haven't got yeah. many people, and it's not so exciting. But some of the places in London, yeah. then. How many have you got there? Thousands? Oh, you've got thousands. I think in Gloucester they used to have a, oh, we a soul out, festival. Yeah, we did. We, outside in Gloucester in the or carnival day. Carnival day. On the yeah. carnival day. I've done that about five or six times now. Yeah. That's outside in the carnival. Yeah. Round with the carnival and then outside at at night time in the You mean festival. performing on a moving... Oh, uh, oh definitely not. career of performing you've done the rock and roll you've done the soul uh, you also do covers of other uh, yeah. well-known exactly and hits, original songs, songs all sorts but and the blues blues yeah but which which do you really yourself like doing out of all those different times yeah now, this is a rather difficult one. Um, I like doing all the sort of modern stuff, like the sort of killers and all that yeah. type of thing. But I also like all the soul songs. Yeah. And I've noticed that the audience, they love things all by sort of people like Marvin Gaye and yeah. all the great artists like that, that yeah. I, try, I, I sing those as yeah. well. And I tend to look at the audience and um, I, go, I, I think, what would they like? You know, I go for that, because yeah. I think that's always a winner. If you look at the audience and think, well, would they like this or would they yeah. like that? Uh, which one do they want you can next? Get case, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, you must have, uh, let me see, 50 years, 60 years. 60 years, yeah. 60 years of sussing out audiences. So singing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and singing all this different We're songs. Open. nine or ten year old lad in that cinema, could you imagine then that you would be now? <laughs> still singing. I mean we're getting into our pension area now and uh, you're still going. Yeah, did you imagine? Did I think I'd be going this long? Um, 
I think I did, yeah, because it's it's been a thing with me. Once once you start it, you try to perfect it, and you get it oh, better and better. Yeah. The better you get it, the more the people like it. Yeah. And I've always wanted this thing, anyhow. So, um, I I think I I probably did think to myself, I'll be going and going this and still it. singing forever. You can try your best. I've done some recording. Oh, lots, yeah. And there have been records, but yeah, mainly for you, it's been, it's been on that stage. Action. Yeah, most of it has, yeah. Van Ellison. Michael Van Ellison. Thank you very much. <laughs> Keep rocking. Keep rocking. Everybody.